In this video, I'll show you how to solve optimization problems in calculus. This is question seven. The steps to solving optimization problems are shown below. The question reads, if three sides of a trapezoid are each 10 centimeters long, how long must the fourth side be if the area is to be maximized? Now recall, a trapezoid looks something like this, where you have two sides that are parallel. So in our case, A and B are parallel and the other two sides can be any length. The trapezoid shown here specifically is referred to as an isosceles trapezoid, which means three of the sides are equal and that last side is not. So if you reread the question, it tells us that three of the sides are equal length, 10 centimeters long, whereas the last side has a different length, and that's what we're looking for. The area to finding a trapezoid is shown right here. Area is equal to half, times a plus b, so the distance of a plus b, times the height. Now it's not shown here, but the height would be this line. So I'm going to call that h, and I'm going to label this as 10, this as 10, and this as 10. Now you'll also notice that the angle here and the angle here are the same. And similarly, the angle here and the angle here are the same. So let's put together a formula for the area for this particular trapezoid. The area is equal to half, which is coming from this part, half times a, this is representing our a, which is 10, plus our b length, which is composed of three parts. It's composed of this part, a 10, and an identical length here. So 10 plus 10, plus this. Now, how do we represent that? Well, if we take this as our theta, and I used this as my reference angle to find out the length of this, we would need to use sine, because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I would write down sine theta times my hypotenuse, which is 10. Now, of course, you could have used this as your reference angle. It is totally up to you. Now, because this part right here represents sine theta times 10, we have to multiply that by 2 because we have another identical one right there. So that represents our B value. And finally, our H value can be represented the same way. But instead of using sine, we're going to use cosine because given that this is our reference, this is the adjacent, we have the hypotenuse. So therefore, our height is equal to cosine theta times 10. What we'll do next is simplify this equation a little bit. Notice that you have a half here and a 10. So that will go away and this will become a 5. And we're left with, and by the way, the 10 and the 10 become a 20. And we're left with 5 cosine theta bracket 20 plus 20 sine theta. This 2 and this 10 multiply to become 20. So we finally have an equation that represents the area of this trapezoid, and it's shown right here. The next thing that we have to do is find the critical points. Now to do that, we need to find the derivative of a, and then set a to zero. Then by solving for theta, we can use that to substitute back into our original equation to find out the maximum area, and we can also use that to find out the length of b. So let's go ahead and find the derivative of this. Notice that you'll need to use the product rule. You have two functions here, essentially, multiplying to each other. I'm going to call this part f and this part g. And then the product rule, what you do is you find the derivative of the first, multiply it to this part of the expression, then add the derivative of this part of the expression and multiply it to that part of the expression. a prime is equal to, let's find the derivative of that. The derivative of cosine theta is negative sine theta. So we have negative 5 sine theta, this part stays the way it is, plus this part now stays the way it is, and the derivative of 20 is 0, plus the derivative of 20 sine theta is 20 cosine theta. Now what I'll do next is simplify this expression as much as I can. And by that, I'll multiply this part into the 20 and the 20 sine theta, and that gives me negative 100 sine theta, and then negative 5 sine times 20 gives me negative 100 sine squared theta, 
and then multiplying these two, I get 100 cosine squared theta. Now I'll set my equation equal to zero to find the critical points. You'll notice that each one of these three terms has a 100. So I can divide the whole equation by 100 to get rid of them. And by doing that, the left side remains as zero. This becomes negative sine theta. This becomes negative sine squared theta. And this becomes plus cosine squared theta. Notice how we're getting closer and closer to solving for theta, which is what we want. The next step is to take this term over to the left side, and that makes it positive. And on the right side, we have cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Now, to answer this question, you'll need to know an identity. And one of the identities is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta gives you cosine 2 theta. So I'm going to replace this cosine 2 2 theta is equal to sine theta. Now, if you remember, one of the special triangles, this one in particular, where we had pi over 2, pi over 3, and pi over 6. Across from here, we had the square root of 3. Across from here, we had 1. And across from here, we had a 2. Now, if I were to take the sine of this angle, and sine, remember, is opposite over hypotenuse, Opposite is 1, and the hypotenuse is 2. That means we can replace this part right here with half. And on the right side, we have cosine 2 theta. That remains the way it is. Now, we need to isolate for this theta. So we're going to take cos inverse of both sides. What happens on the right side, you end up with 2 theta. And on the left side, you end up with, well, let's use our calculator. So we have inverse cosine 1 over 2 gives us 1 pi over 3, or pi over 3. Now we still have to find out this theta, so we divide both sides by 2, and that gives us pi over 6 is equal to theta. So that is our critical point, and now what we will do to answer this question, it says, how long must that fourth side be? So to find that fourth side, we're going to take this number, and remember, b was equal to 10 plus 2 times 10 times sine theta. So if we replace this into this theta, we should end up with the length of side b. So let's do that. We have 10 plus 20 sine of pi over 6. This 20 came from the fact that I multiplied the 2 and the 10 together. Using our calculator, 10 plus 20 sine of pi over 6 gives us 20. So this means that side B for this isosceles trapezoid has to equal to 20. Now if you were to ask to find the area, what you would do is you would take that value and as suggested at the beginning of the video, you would place it into here and here, and you would end up with your maximum area. And in case you did that, you would get 75 to the square root of 3. So multiplying this together is around 129, and that would be the area of this trapezoid. So there you have it. That is how to solve an optimization problem in calculus. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, visit our website at studyforce.com. We're an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.